dear students, welcome back to 60 out of 60 in KSET Chemistry 2025 series. So today we are going to discuss about the aromatic hydrocarbons, okay, and especially we'll be talking about the benzene, the structure, and some rules of aromaticity, okay. So it is going to be a very small lecture, but yes, again very important class. So let us start with the first thing, okay. We all have been completing these things, so I know this chapter has been little lengthier, but yes, that is required because this is a very important topic. Now before that I just want to tell you, remind you that we are having the PU2 success blueprint test series okay, to help you to boost your PU2 preparation. Now you can use the coupon code NY2025. Okay? So this is our special new year discount. Okay? You can use this coupon code and avail flat rupees 100 off. Okay, So that will be available at 499 rupees. And what all things you will be getting in this particular test series, you will be getting 12 mock tests which will include 4 part tests and 8 full length papers. You will be getting doubt clarification classes, one shot revision videos as well as video solutions with detailed explanation. Okay? So these are the things students which are very very important and you will be like uh, your preparation will definitely gear up with this. So please do not miss this and this coupon code is valid only till Jan 10. Okay, so make sure that you purchase it before that and the link is there in the description section. So please go there, click on the link and purchase it as soon as possible. Fine, now let us move it forward to today's class. Okay, fine. So benzene, all of we know the general structure or the formula of benzene is C6H6, right? But yes, now coming to the structure of benzene, I want to explain you before structure some position of benzene. Now see, suppose you have any group attached here, okay. Now the next position, this one and this one, okay, are called as ortho positions. Now this position and this positions are called as meta position, okay. This is meta, this is ortho and the exact opposite to the substituent is called as para position, okay. Now it is always remember the wherever there is something attached to the benzene ring the next two are ortho the next two are meta and the one position will be para now question like i have seen students getting confused if it is given like this if i have given something like this then you get confused which is ortho which is para always remember if this group is attached here the adjacent two will be ortho the next two will be meta okay and the exact opposite one will be the para one Okay. One more confusion that comes to student is if there is no substituent, okay, that means nothing is attached here, okay, it is simple H. In that case, there is no con there is no concept of ortho, para and meta. Ortho, para and meta always comes to existence when there is a substituent attached to the benzene ring, okay. Like for example, I will give you an example and explain uh, one second, one second students. Mm, okay, just a minute. Now see, suppose we have like this, uh, here uh, I am putting CH3, okay, and here I am putting CH3. Now you cannot say that, uh, one second, I will put here. Now see, now you cannot say that this is ortho and this is meta. It is not like that. When there is only one substituent attached, it can be anything. This there is no ortho para meta at any condition here. Now, if you attach a second substituent, suppose I added here OH, okay, then I can say that then because it is next to this one, so these two are ortho, okay. So I can say this CH3 is in ortho position with respect to this OH group. So the clear concept is clear, I hope that ortho para meta concept is required or comes to an existence when already one substituent is attached okay so here you can example uh, this is only benzene methyl benzene but here we have added so this is ortho so you can this compound common name is ortho xylene ortho xylene or 1 2 dimethyl benzene now similarly here you can see you have added uh, at the third position one methyl group so that is meta xylene or 1 3 dimethyl benzene and if you add it at the fourth position, it is para xylene or 1,4 dimethyl benzene. Okay? So this is the structure or I can say uh, the, uh, uh, the components of the benzene ring. 
Next coming to the structure, okay, structure of benzene ring is very, very important. The first thing is benzene is a resonance hybrid of various structures, primarily calculus two forms. Its delocalized pi electrons are represented by circle inside the hexagon, okay. So, now what happens Res uh, in benzene, we can find resonance, why? Because of conjugated system, you can see single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond like this, right. So, both of this A and B are the calculus structures of resonance of benzene, okay. Now, to represent this, so electron density can according to this particular structure, the electron density is on this carbon, it between these two carbon. And according to this structure, the electron density is between these two carbon, right. So, to highlight it or to show that the electron density is, two, is throughout the ring, we represent it with a circle or a ring, okay. So, if somebody asks you, what is the structure of benzene? I remember it in one of the, in my practical exams, okay. So, in my practical viva, my teacher asked me to draw the structure of benzene ring. Then I did this one, okay. The teacher said, uh, no, it is not correct. Then I did this one, then also teacher said it is not correct, okay. After that I did this one and the teacher said yes, this is the correct structure. So, because when you represent this one, you are representing only one structure of benzene, but electron density can be present here also. So, always whenever in a question it is asked that to draw the structure of benzene, the correct structure is this one. I hope this is clear. Next, each carbon in the benzene is sp2 hybridized. So, if you just see, let me just little bit draw it bigger one. Okay. Okay. Now, if you see each carbon here has three sigma bond, right? One, two, and three. It has three sigma bond. So, if there are three sigma bond, then the hybridization will be sp2. Okay. So, that is why this is there. Next coming to 6 cc sigma bonds in a hexagonal plane through overlapping of sp2 orbital. So, now here there is one sp2 orbital, this is one sp2 orbital, okay. So, overlapping of sp2 orbital and the 6 carbons are in one plane, okay. So, if you just see, it is like a plane, all the 6 carbons are lying in one plane, okay. The 6 CH sigma bonds through overlapping of sp2 and hybridized hydrogens s orbital. So, what is the uh, overlapping here, there is sp2. Now, see, if there is sp2 hybridization, that means there are 3 sp2 orbitals. So, each carbon I can show, this is one sp2 orbital, this is another sp2 orbital and this is another sp2 orbital. So, this carbon is also having 3 sp2 orbitals like this. So, this one will overlap, this one will overlap. Here, there is no overlap, okay, sp2 and s, okay, sp2 of one carbon and s of another hydrogen. Next one, unhybridized p orbital on each carbon atom forms a delocalized pi bond above and below the ring of the plane, creating do donut shape electron clouds. So, now here what happens, 3 p orbitals are involved, okay, 2 p orbitals are involved, right, s p 2. There is 1 p orbital which is unhybridized, okay, and this unhybridized p orbitals are used for the formation of pi bonds. Okay. So, you can see the structure, this pi bond is formed due to the unhybridized p orbital overlapping. Okay. Next, coming to some structure, again we have, you can see here the structure in detail. So, you can see here, these are the unhybridized p orbitals, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the overlapping here is what is your uh, pi bond formation, okay. Here also it is like this. So, you can be seeing one, so the difference you are seeing the structure, the difference, these are the two resonating structures. Now, the x-ray diffraction confirms the benzene's planar structure with equal cc bond length 139 picometer. The cc bond length in benzene is 139 picometer intermediate between single and double bond, okay. So, it is not the value of single bond, neither it is the value of double bond. It is somewhere in between the single and double bond. Now, what is the reason for that? Now, see, if I have this structure of, okay, this is a structure of benzene ring and next I have this one. Okay. Now, see, suppose I mark this C1 and C2, C3, C4, 
C5 and C6. Now between C1 and C2 there is double bond. Now this suppose moves here. Okay, this bond shifts here. So between C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and C6. Now between 2 and 3 there will be double bond. Okay. Now in this particular structure. So now you see in this structure between 1 and 2 there is double bond and in this structure between 1 and 2 there is single bond. So the 1 and 2 the bond between 1 and 2 is never completely sing, uh, single bond or never completely double bond right it varies. So that is why the bond length varies the value of the bond length is between single bond and double bond. Now the delocalized pi electron enhance the benzene stability and explain its reluctance to addition reaction unlike hypothetical cyclohexatrine. So now these delocalized pi electrons okay they increase the stability of the benzene ring and that is why the benzene ring is less reactive towards addition reaction clear okay. Now moving towards the aromaticity okay this is very very important rules of aromaticity so how can you guess whether a structure is aromatic or not that we will learn. So the first one is cyclic structure okay so the, there should be a ring structure for the compound to be aromatic the first condition. Second condition is its planarity means the, uh, the compound should be in one plane all the atoms of that compound should lie in one plane that is called planar structure. Now how will you know whether it is planar or not? The molecule must be planar or nearly planar so that the pi orbitals of the atoms in the ring can overlap. Now how to check that it is planar? So the one of the trick is all the carbons must be sp2 hybridized okay then the molecule will be planar. Next conjugation the ring must have a conjugated system meaning that it should have alternating single and double bonds or lone pairs allowing continuous delocalization of pi electrons. So the pi electrons should be able to delocalize continuously okay. So there should be continuous resonance or continuous delocalization for that we need conjugation. Now how to check conjugation for checking conjugation you can have again double bond single bond double bond that is one possibility or you can have lone pair single bond double bond okay. Next coming to Huckel's rules this is the most important rule so according to this rule the molecule must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons where n is the num uh, sorry n is a non-negative integer okay. This is often referred to as 4n plus 2 or okay here some error is there okay 4n plus 2 rule. Now for example if you see benzene okay now benzene has 6 pi electrons right. So how we can represent can we write 6 in the form of 4n plus 2. So if I write n is equal to 1 then it is 4 into 1 plus 2 right. So since this 6 pi electrons can be written in the form of 4n plus 2 benzene will be a uh, uh, aromatic compound. Next coming to cyclobutadiene if you see cyclobutadiene this is the structure of cyclobutadiene okay here there are 4 electrons. So can I write in any way there are how many pi electrons here 2 pi electrons and here 2 pi electrons that means it has 4 pi electrons. So can I write in any way this 4 pi electrons as 4 in plus 2 no right I can only write it in the form of one second yeah I can only write in the form of 4 n electrons. Right. So if it is 4 n electrons then it is anti aromatic compound okay not aromatic. Coming to stability the aromatic molecules are highly stable due to the delocalization of pi electrons mm, okay just a minute let me erase this one okay. So now if I want to show you that how cyclo two structures I just want to draw okay this is one structure. Okay, you have to tell whether it is aromatic or not and I have another structure like this okay. Now see here if you see this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2 but this carbon is sp3. Now this is the first condition the cyclic condition is satisfied here but is it planar? It is not planar why because we have one carbon here which is sp3 hybridized. I told you for the molecule to be planar all the carbon should have sp2 hybridization or there should be some lone pair. So because this carbon is not sp2 hybridization this molecular is not planar so this is not aromatic okay. 
Now, if you consider here, you can say this is sp2, this is sp2, this is sp2, this is sp2. Oxygen hybridization we do not have to check, okay. Now, we will check the second thing that is conjugation. We can see single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond alternatively it is there. Next, what was the next thing? So, we got cyclic, one second. We got cyclic, we got planarity, we have to check conjugation next, right? Sorry, mm, yes. Now, when you check conjugation, you can see this lone pair can come here, this bond can shift here, then this bond can shift here, this bond can shift here. So, there is continuous conjugation, okay? So, that means this is also uh, a rule is, uh, condition is satisfied. Next, coming to Huckel's rule or the 4n plus 2 rule. Here, you see there are 2 pi electrons, here also there are 2 pi electrons, so total 4 pi electrons. Now, this electron pair is also involved in resonance, so you have to count these electrons also. So, now we have 6 electrons, now 6 electrons satisfy 4n plus 2 Huckel rule. So, if it is satisfying, so this compound is aromatic, okay. So, like this we can get which is aromatic and which is not aromatic, okay. So, that is all students in this class. In the next class, we are going to study about the preparation and the react reactions of benzene and something very, very important, okay. So, please stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe the channel.